everyone and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achins. As you all can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, who's going to take us through a little bit of a challenge that comes up in front of India. Since the war has begun, India has taken up a stance which is pretty much independent of uh, what is happening in the world, and it has been criticized and also acknowledged and appreciated for the same thing. But as the war goes on and the incidents and the events actually open out. things may or may not be the same for india there's a lot that has happened in the past couple of days the uh, past couple of days that we need to kind of analyze thank you sir for joining me for the story of india and the ukraine war yeah welcome thanks a lot uh, for calling me again here yeah? and uh, we you know the ukraine war we have analyzed from many perspectives it's high time we started looking at it from our perspective and where where will it lead us right uh, it's a critical thing uh, a few good things have come out and there's a few problematic issues which we have to hurdle over uh and we have unless we understand the nuances of what all these things how do we move forward so let's start absolutely sir i'd like to actually just go over russia what they're doing right now to kind of base this conversation because everything revolves yeah. around what russian actions yeah about. what they're doing yeah, i agree with you so at the beginning of the conflict you know putin president putin had come out clearly stated certain objectives denazification demilitarization you know so on and so forth and recognition of uh, crimea donbas donetsk uh, donetsk and luhansk area and stuff like that uh now as the war has kind of gone forward initially all of us were in the perception it's going to be a short crisp very very you know hardcore war but it's kind of now come on to uh, it's cross three weeks um a lot of analysis come out about russian actions and how they're going to do stuff they have increased the levels of violence right now is this part of a plan or a negotiation tactic or how do you kind of analyze what the russians are doing today sir See, this was not part of the original plan let's be very clear russia wanted to finish it off you know their experience of czechoslovakia hungary earlier uh, then crimea and uh, you know georgia uh, they planned it as a short affair which failed that everyone knows now what is happening is very simple see putin has four uh, uh, demands first ukraine should join nato donetsk and luhansk should be recognized as independent states third crimea should be recognized as part of russia so these three virtually zelensky has agreed okay so the fourth is demilitarization okay that he is not able to do very easily uh, so far there a lot of resistance uh, around cities all cities are not being encircled the ukrainian forces are fighting the russian forces are going very slow right probably they don't want to uh, uh, you know uh, give too much uh, collateral damage they're being careful but then the western media says they are doing hell of a lot so that something which we will we will never know it will come out in in days but what is significant is the air strikes have increased and mm. military targets in the west ukraine are being hit right this is and also the arms industry in uh, ukraine is also being hit the zorya you know gas turbine uh, factory has been hit that used to make ship gas turbines mm. the antono factory has been hit in series of aircraft you know so a lot of organized planned destruction is taking place so this is probably trying to achieve the fourth aim of demilitarization simultaneously talks are also going on mm. and whatever is happening on the battlefield is also pressure on the talks so Uh, i think putin is going as per a plan the uh, refugee situation is going bad to worse uh civil casualties have increased uh, collateral damage is also increased uh and sanctions have also increased from the western world latest i heard russia has sanctioned you know president biden and blinken and all that so let's see where it goes but like i we said we should see what is it and what is there for us in india 
there is a lot that Russia also holds, so it's not just a one-way street. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a one-way street, and that's coming, or it'll happen slowly. We've seen pretty much the world take a concise stand and kind of move different in their own ways recently. Um, yeah. So, talking about India, you know, initially when USA was hard bent on bringing the world into this entire battle, uh, you know, UNSC was called, General Assembly was called. India had to abstain three times. And at that time, the war was pretty limited. It was, uh, it seemed like it's going to be a heavy amount of incursion, a little bit of dish dash, and probably the Russians would withdraw. Um, today, the intensity at which the Russians are fighting, as per if you believe the reports that are there, and even the Russian media is now saying that there are air attacks and there are, you know, yeah, bombardment has increased. So, one can relate to that particular factor. So that means the violence levels have increased. How does that affect yeah, India's yeah. position, sir? Look, uh, I think, uh, you know, now I don't think anyone is going to go about going back to UN and yeah. to say that, uh, you know, though initially everyone was you know, a little upset with India, that India seemed to be siding with uh, Russia. But people have understood Right, we yes. uh, because of our long standing equation with Russia and the fact that a lot of our arms and equipment uh, is from Russia, you have to sustain it. You can't go against them. If you go against them, Indian armed forces will be weakened. If Indian armed forces are weakened, then they will not be good enough against China, you know. And it is like the West has realized, rather, the USA has realized that you can't press India beyond a point, it will be detrimental to themselves. So they backed off on that. Right. So, but be that as it may, I don't think anyone is going to go back, you know, uh, and again vote against, uh, you know, Russia and all that. We don't have to take a stand. But let's put it in perspective. Yesterday I heard the UN Secretary General talking and he was saying, you know, big countries like Israel, you know, uh, India, China, Turkey, they have to come and start mediating. So you have been counted as a person who can mediate. And we have the equation to mediate. Right? There are some article which has come out that China and India should start the mediation process. Mm. Right? And it's up to the government whether they want to mediate or not. It's up to the Prime Minister whether he wants to mediate or not. But that's a different story. The fact is that we've gone past that stage. Right? Uh, people are trying to end the war now. And when people are trying to end the war, India becomes an important player. <clears throat> okay. And we also have to understand that, you know, people have recognized that India is... Look, India sent humanitarian aid to, you know, uh, medical equipment and medical supplies to Ukraine on the third day. Uh, till day before yesterday, China had not sent anything. Despite promising everything. So, people understand. Okay. Uh, so, I don't think our position anymore is that bad as it was probably in the initial stage. In any case, now people feel that, uh, look, why should they also, there is also feeling that India will not take too much this thing because it's not our battle. It's a European problem. Right? We can only help both of them to come to the table. We are not the cause for this. So, they have to sort it out. And we can only help them sort it out. Right? And we've helped Ukraine. We've helped, we have, we'll help Russia. We've helped Russia diplomatically. We've helped Ukraine physically and diplomatically also. So I think our position is no more that critical as it was for, say, last week or in the initial phases of this war. So I'd like to actually just take this uh, mediation thing a little forward. You know, we've seen a host of uh, presidents actually try to get inside pre-war, during war. And uh, it started yeah. from Macron, it started from Olaf Scholz, it started from, um, you know, all these, uh, the, the uh, Baltic countries actually putting their word across. Then after that, it actually moved on to Recep Tayyip Erdogan from Turkey, who kind of tried to get the, both of them together. Yeah. Now the ball seems to be in Israeli court. And that is what the kind of uh, main media uh, reports. Um, there's been serious conversations. There was a rumor that was floated about the Israeli prime minister putting across a, a surrender sort of a recommendation to the, the Ukrainians. So there's, there's been a lot which is happening. We also noticed that 
there has been regular conversations now that you know a lot of evacuation is pretty much done with and we saw uh, a statement in the lok sabha and the rajya sabha as well is still the conversations between zelensky prime minister modi and president putin this this triangle is still on and every yeah, yeah, yeah. we see something happening india is not the one who kind of comes out and says something uh, is there anything we need to read between the lines let's see see we have kept our op- options open to mediate no one has asked us to mediate but yeah. we are doing whatever we can mm. uh, turkey they have sidelined already right uh, israel is the latest flavor for mediation let us see where it goes if israel fails turkey fails china is not acceptable europe rest of the europe is not acceptable the mantle will come on india it's the next step right so maybe once we we start negotiate uh, mediating things will come to a halt let's we hope for the best and i think we should uh, not hesitate to mediate see the problem we must understand that india doesn't take too much initiative in all these issues right but when the chance comes you should take it you should so right yeah. and we should be seen to be part of the solution and not part of the problem yeah of course hmm. that is interesting so yeah. you know uh, what is happening is russia obviously will need a lot of help and one thing that we noticed from the world is the chinese kind of try to switch around with the russian they've offered them their uh, payment system for their cards and stuff like that um there has been a stock of some military transfers here and there how much of that is a rumor i don't know because china imports 70% of its own arms from russia so i'm not sure about that but uh, you know the funny thing that came out was uh, biden in his speech a day or two ago pointed out at china and warned them and there's been a meeting of the us and the chinese delegations as well um no such condemnation or no such push has come towards india when we talk about the oil offer that is being yeah this is something one has to understand about the oil first and foremost when usa banned russian oil it was very clearly stated by president biden that it, this ban is not universal hmm. he also said that you know oil ban it depends on states because people are dependent on uh, russian energy he says you can take your call as you want so there's no ban okay and it's a international commodity still russia has not been sanctioned to not to export oil so they have oil whatever the uh, usa is not taking that's up they have they can export so they've offered it to india and they've offered it to india at a discounted rate why should we not take it there's no ban no nothing and in this i think india has done a smart move they just taken 3 billion million dollars uh, million barrels right and those are just about not even one day's uh, purchase we consume about 4.42 mm. and we've taken 3 it's one day's purchase less than one day's purchase so we are testing waters we bought it let's see what the reaction is If the reaction is favorable, I'm sure we'll go ahead. If the reaction is not favorable, we might scale down. So I think that's a smart move. And uh, since there's no ban, we should go ahead, right? You can't say no, no. There's no ban, but you don't buy. That can't be the case, no. Right. So I think, and India will always say, look, I'm an energy dependent state. I have to re- import 85 percent of my energy if someone is giving it to me cheap why should i not take it at 25% discount so i think india has got its bases covered there's a trial run going on if things go okay we'll go otherwise i think we'll pull back and we had this experience with iran if you remember <laughs> at the point of time we were dependent on iran oil yes. when mr trump had you know said no he had sanctioned iran and uh, we even then we slowly ramped down we didn't overnight cut off oil supplies from iran mm. we slowly ramped down so in this case also if needed we'll slowly ramp up or cut off 
I am sure the Russians also understand our position. Right? So there must be some deal being struck. So we we'll leave it at that. There, I mean, that's one thing that I like to mention. The backdoor diplomacy that India has actually carried out uh, during this crisis in the world is something that has been recognized even by the opposition today in the yeah yeah in the uh, no doubt uh, in the in the Rajya Sabha. It was uh, quite interesting to actually see that. Um, so interesting point about the oil. The Russians have actually accepted to take uh, rupee as the payment. So that is see, the, uh, yeah yeah that it, see, historically we used to do uh, trade on rupee ruble basis you know with the Soviet Russia uh, today since you can't they can't do dollar trade they're going to rupee trade so that's okay it's fair enough but there are some international currency in hand no correct they do they will do the trade with yuan with china and with the rupee ruble trade and maybe this will get offset against imports from there we as it is need to probably pay them money for the weapons and yeah. stuff for that so weapons and that will get offset there so it's not a it will be more like a barter system but the interesting point point just a little bit of a deviation uh, from the india topic the oil prices have kind of stabilized below 100 today so that's a I don't know. Yeah, that will go down because, see, look, uh, that had to happen uh, to my way of thinking. Oil is a commodity where you can't overnight shut it off. Yeah. And you can't overnight ramp down your requirements. Okay. If person A doesn't take oil from person B, person C will take. Somebody will. And person A will go with to someone else because the overall... Uh, output of oil in the world is that much mm. and the requirement is that much there's no gluck we, at this point of time just before this we were at a balanced state of consumption versus demand yeah so the this war hysteria has uh, thrown up the oil price now that there is some readjustment taking place look what will happen pragmatically you know energy is fundamental to you know industry and almost everything you can't cut out, say, 10-15% of the world's supplies of energy and say, we'll continue as before. It won't happen. Mm. Okay. And uh, so, they'll ramp down. All this will come down. It'll stabilize over a period of time. It'll in, in fact, it might fall. What if Iran says, I'll produce more oil and dump it into the market? What if Russia does that? So let us see where it goes. Uh, Iran, yes. The latest talk is that the Russians have given out a statement that they are pretty much agreeable with the Iran deal. So that will be beneficial for us as well. Uh, look, look, if they are agreeable with the Iran deal and you know, if uh, USA doesn't step into it, tomorrow if Russia and Iran with the current thing have a nuclear deal, what will happen to uh, US? <laughs> See, the point is this. Russia has a lot of cards to play. Yeah. Okay. It has got a lot of cards to play. What we normally forget is that Russia is a self-sufficient nation. It produces food. It has energy. It's got the biggest land mass. Population is low. Technology is self-sufficient. Infrastructure is there. He's a, he's infrastructure is there. He's a net exporter of everything. So he you can't just cut him off. People need his him. Look, the other thing, it's okay. You the Europe might not like Russia and they might sanction. What about Africa? What about Middle East? They need yep. They need technology. They need gas. Or uh, this. Uh, they need. Uh, energy they need goods Russia controls titanium market it's the biggest producer of titanium tomorrow it stops there are a lot of items uh, rare earths not rare earths uh, some material like palladium and all which are required for semiconductors x y z tomorrow he, he says I'll not give you what happens or I'll give you only with dollars. He'll, he owns all those. 
I mean, people don't understand this. He has not played his cards out. Just wait. See, again, people say, "Oh, superpower means you should have a GDP, a who all that." It's it's not the fact that superpowers can do everything and other powers can't do anything. That's what Russia is showing. He is self-sufficient in almost everything. He is in the export. uh situation he has got the cards to hold everyone back and there are enough takers for his what yeah. he has the two biggest armies in the world are his his buyers so <laughs> so that's a lot yeah it's a lot yes sir sir talking about india you know one thing that uh, we've also discussed this and we've always said that india must have an independent stand it must have strategic autonomy Uh, and that's probably the dream where the prime minister also came up with this atmanirbharta and of course a uh, lot of things have happened there's no question the indian system does take a little time before it kind of you know shifts its gear and starts moving into the direction which is needed uh, apart from everything else i'd like to talk about defense which probably is the main factor of uh, you know india's abstention and even if it did want to criticize what was happening in uh, Ukraine in terms of the violence or anything like that, but defense would have held us back. Uh, how do you think this whole thing kind of you know nudges the entire defense thing into place? Do you think uh, See, the system will? Yeah, I, uh, tell me if I complete complete. I'm just asking. Do you think the system will kind of finally you know realize this requirement and kind of start moving for it? See, there's a realization in India and in many people uh, that. Uh, there is a requirement to uh, reduce our dependence on russia through atmanirbharta so that we can get some strategic autonomy or strategic independence to do what we want to do if you are tied to russia you will have this problem the only way out is atmanirbharta okay and we have to have a focused way of going about tackling this business in fact i've just written an article tomorrow it should be out in first post Uh, i'll give it to you we have to look at capital schemes where russia is involved we have to put the uh, capital schemes are okay to their tomorrow's equipment new equipment mm. we mm. we can do something about it and i in that article i've said how to go about that but the more important thing is the revenue most of our russian warships most of our old migs and sukhois uh most of our tanks some of our engineer equipment especially the bridging equipment yeah they are all russian and they're old we need spares and those spares have to come from there we the gas turbines and uh, for our ships are from ukraine that factory is just destroyed so what do you do right uh, there are methods first and foremost is that you can do reverse engineering you can do import substitution there are models also which i've suggested the way we did bofors the, the you know we took the uh, design of the bofors and converted to danush there's a model there how to go about doing reverse engineering so you have to do reverse engineering and get to be self sufficient so that your dependence on maintaining your current fleet you know uh, uh, on russia and ukraine goes down because ukraine also will not be able to give you anything much and that is one way the second is uh, you know okay you can't get from russia try getting it from poland and you know georgia belarus other countries other warsaw countries zek republic slovakia they also had the same equipment they also have have the similar capability yes. so those spares and all you can get from there and <coughs> with atmanirbhar tie ups you know joint ventures where these are made here then you can even if some the some are old equipment uh, you know we are going to a great link to hold them on and main do with it maybe it's time we have to junk them and cannibalize start cannibalizing and maintain say if you have five pieces of a particular equipment which is lived past its life let's maintain three and use the other two for cannibalization and spares and then when you know it slowly it it will be a dwindling return one day one will go but for that to do that capability has to be made indigenously that item has to be a replacement item has to be made indigenously 
so we have to have a focused method of reducing our dependence on russia and part of when you do that i mean and when you and you also have to have a look we are in strategic partnership with them on in certain issues some of our uh, you know know how for our third aircraft carrier uh, and uh, you know i mean and just the second aircraft carrier which is under construction today and our nuclear submarine everything and we we are getting some some know how from russia on this so we have to be a little careful and smart about how to go about this whole story right intelligent uh, because some of these technologies are not going to come to you from usa or the west yeah. okay so it's not as if that you have to completely wean away from russia but definitely you have to reduce right and now let's see all this will happen in due course we have options we have options uh, we have we can invite many of these people to now that their countries are in problem they can't trade they they will not get dollars they will not get you know financial uh, pro- uh, uh, channels the sanctions are not going to get lifted in a hurry ukraine is going to be in a problem for a long time it will be remain destabilized for a long time to come so if that is the case tell them to come and set shop here get over all the problems and we'll benefit them we'll get technology we'll get everything and this is the best time to do it mm. so we have to take some initiatives right we have to take some initiatives uh, strategically right we have to do some strategic thinking while it's a problem there's an opportunity also and it will give you a kick start to atmanirbharta and eventually to strategic economy so last question we i'd like to you know shift back to mediation because that's something which i feel is an opportunity for india to actually put its stamp on the world and secondly of course to regionally in within the region also stabilize its position uh, especially against china because pakistan today of course uh, is yeah, pakistan is a uh, non entity yeah i i mean I, it's got its own issues right now and it's not yeah, yeah. in the world stage but having yeah. said that uh, i look at it in another way and correct me if i'm wrong i'm putting my foot out there when i say this if in case india can actually play a constructive role uh, the world value of india would be very up there and of course which will deter the chinese in a lot of different fashions where you know things would have to kind of push push and shove and get into a point where there there has to be a uh, solution to the problem uh, i think you're right uh, if india starts mediating and takes this to a conclusion the overall geopolitical stock of russia india will go up okay uh, in any case china says we'll do our own mediation and all i don't think anyone will take it right uh, i don't think the west will allow this mediation by china to happen I don't think the Russians will allow it. <laughs> no, we, 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 we don't know. Russians might allow, but the, definitely West won't allow it. They'll not That's allow right. the Ukrainians to do it. So eventually, I don't see Turkey coming in mm. at all because Turkey is at some point is part of NATO, and it becomes an interested party. Okay, they might have used Turkey to go as a foreign Smart. minister to go and speak because that's close by, mm. right? you just hop across the black sea and you're in turkey so they would have spoken but mediation is a different ball game okay so for that at this point of time uh, the prime minister of israel has gone um, who knows if he succeeds well and good if he doesn't succeed they might come back to uh, india it is also possible that india and israel together do the mediation why should you do it alone okay so the possibilities are there and when the chance comes we should do it it is it will your geopolitical stock will increase tremendously on that there's no doubt at all right uh, so and also our prime minister at this point of time is politically strong at home also oh, yeah okay so he has got that strength uh, domestic strength to you know mediate cuz your external strength is dependent on your domestic strength which he's got 
So let us see where it goes. Uh, the government might have its own views about mediation. We we might all say we should mediate. We should mediate. The government might say, "I'll we'll keep part of it. It's not our. It's not our baby. Let some European mediate." Why should we get inside this? Why should yeah? And we should get you know, and we should mediate only if we there's a hope of success. At this point of time, I don't think Mr. Putin is prepared to listen to anyone. That is an interesting point, sir, because he's blackface pretty much every leader that is gone. Yeah, every <laughs> leader with this thing. So let us see. Yeah, maybe in the next two three days uh, we'll come to know because the talks are ongoing between Ukraine and Russia one to one. And somewhere I heard, saw either in CNN or in BBC uh, someone saying that the talks are going well. Going well, yes. Right, talks are going well. Um, uh, to the extent that Zelensky has said, I'm prepared to come and meet you also. So there are issues there. So in the overall thing. How do you make mediation happen? There is also a view that look, Zelensky should be not made to look as if he surrendered. That will be a loss of face for NATO completely. So he has to be given some, you know, uh, thing. Maybe in that thing, it'll we will know in the next three to four days. That's my yeah. view, whether we are going to mediate or not. And of course, the business of this oil, which we have, you know, uh, indicated that we want to take Russian oil, will all which way that wind is blowing also will tell us whether we can mediate or not. Probably give us a ledge over Russia as well, keep us. No, it's not that. What's the world reaction? Is it that of course? That of course. Uh, if the world reaction is that look, uh, you buy oil, why should you mediate? You are an interested party. You are on Russian side. They will, they will. Others will not agree to your mediation. So you, when you mediate people, you have to be agreeable to all parties. Eh? Those rules probably only apply to India, sir, not to Europe. Well, see, no, but that's a different story. But look, yeah. real on politics light, is on a lighter vein, sir. No, no. The cards are as they are laid on the table. No? We have to de- uh, handle that accordingly. The way it comes to us. Yeah, you can't yeah, hide a, the situation. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, insight, insightful discussion. You know, there's there's a lot happening over here. That uh, and I also kind of personally believe that there is some bre- breakthrough which is going to happen because normally before a war kind of ends, if you look at history, especially the Russians, they like to kind of show their heavy force to show the opponent that they are you know now in a place that they need to kind of agree. So, as Janan Shankar also brought it out, it may be a negotiation tactic, the kind of violence which is happening. Uh, yes, it is bad, but while it's war, I mean, you can't justify it, but that's how it is. Uh, having said that, India it was, it finds itself in an opportunity, but I think I'm going to, you know, you're the last part that you put across that it needs to be a short, short victory and that's the time when India should go in. Uh, for any sort of an action because it's that's when the win is there. It should not be like the other leaders that have been literally brushed aside and they lost an opportunity for themselves as well, for whatever reasons they may be. Thanks so much. Sir. I think three, four days is, uh, it's a volatile situation. Maybe tomorrow, day after the day after that or by the weekend, uh, we may get some good news and I'm sure I'll be able to get General Shankar back with me to analyze uh, how things will go forward because as we brought out before, there are going to be a lot of changes in the world order going forward from this. It's not just going to be the regular way everybody hunky-dory. This could, there's, there's going to be a huge amount of changes. Thank you so much, sir. Till next time for uh, further analysis into Ukraine, Russia and the world order and India. Uh, Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind. Thank you. <laughs>